today guys we will be discussing minoxidil and its mode of action. How exactly does minoxidil work to stop your hair from falling out and does it address the root cause of hair loss? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you are new here, do make sure to hit subscribe if you want updating on any of the latest hair loss news or any breakthroughs that we find out about. And if you're worried about your hair loss, don't forget to click the link in the description to take the Hair Guard Hair Loss Quiz. What you'll do is answer a few short questions about yourself and then you'll get free expert advice on how to regrow hair. And with that, let's get straight into today's video. Minoxidil, more commonly known as Rogaine and the way that it works to combat hair loss. Now guys, minoxidil was originally developed in the 1960s as an antihypertensive, a drug that is used to treat high blood pressure. But early on, researchers noticed something unusual. Some of the patients taking the drug to treat their high blood pressure were also regrowing their hair. This observation would eventually lead in the late 1980s to the FDA approving minoxidil as the first medication for the treatment of male pattern baldness. Even though minoxidil has been on the market for many decades now, its mechanism of action on the scalp is still not clearly understood. It is thought to act in two ways. The first is by altering the hair cycle, promoting the anagen or growth phase at the expense of telogen or resting phase. It likely does this in two ways, and these are A, prompting follicles in telogen to transition prematurely to anagen, and B, actually lengthening the duration of the anagen phase so that hairs have a chance to grow longer. The second way minoxidil gives its results is by increasing hair diameter, which gives more thickness and the appearance of a full head of hair. On a physiological level, how minoxidil lowers blood pressure is quite clear. One of its metabolites, minoxidil sulfate, relaxes the vascular smooth muscle and this leads to a drop in blood pressure. One possible way is via vasodilation, namely making the blood vessels in the follicles wider and increasing blood flow in the scalp. During the catagen or regression phase of the hair cycle, some of the blood vessels in the follicles degenerate, whereas the opposite happens during the anagen or growing phase when new blood vessels are formed to support the expanding follicle. So it is possible that minoxidil's vasodilatory effects are what is ultimately responsible for kickstarting the follicle growth phase. Minoxidil is also thought to stimulate vascular and endothelial growth factor or VEGF. This is a signaling protein that promotes angiogenesis as well as cell survival and proliferation and it might well turn out to be a crucial part of minoxidil's action on the molecular level. So will minoxidil work for you? Minoxidil will give results in approximately two out of three men who take it. Of these two thirds, maybe half will see their hair loss stabilize and the other half will see some increase in hair. Treatment is necessary for at least four to six months before results become evident and you need to allow at least a full year to see full results. If you want sustained benefits from minoxidil, you must take it for life. As soon as treatment is discontinued, all the hair gains will disappear and any hair that you regrew will fall out within three to four months, something which is clearly mentioned in the drugs package insert. Now, does minoxidil address the root cause of hair loss? No, it doesn't. As we described above, minoxidil acts by manipulating the growth cycle of healthy hairs. It stimulates the follicles early transition from resting to growing phase and also prolongs the duration of the growing phase. Combined, these two actions will result in the appearance of more and longer hair on the scalp. After all, the number of hair on your head at any time is a direct result of the ratio of hairs that are growing versus the hairs that are resting. But minoxidil does not address the underlying cause of hair loss, which is the increased sensitivity of your hair to the miniaturizing effects of androgens and DHT in particular. So even if you see some hair growth while on minoxidil, this is not due to the reversal of miniaturized hair follicles all the miniaturized follicles on your scalp will remain miniaturized. Guys, this is the reason minoxidil is recommended for younger men and particularly men who are displaying the first signs of hair loss. For these men, the overgrowth of healthy hair that minoxidil will cause may be sufficient to restore some of the scalp's earlier appearance. But if your androgenetic alopecia has progressed to the point where you have gone bald, minoxidil will do nothing for you. So minoxidil works by using the healthy follicles on your head to compensate for the miniaturized ones. Imagine you are on a boat that is leaking water and instead of trying to find the source of the leak and trying to cover it up, you just take a big bucket and start emptying out the water that leaks in. 
Now this guys is minoxidil. You might be one of the roughly one in two men for whom it works as long as you are on it, but as soon as you stop using it, it will become obvious that nothing has been done to address the underlying cause of hair loss. At that point, all the visible gains that you made while on the drug will go away. So guys, that's all we have time for today. Hit us up in the comments below. Have you personally tried minoxidil and do you feel it was worth the money and effort? And what did you see when you went off the drug? Regardless of how it works and regardless of its limitations, the historical importance of minoxidil cannot be understated, as it actually made scientists and society at large realize that we are not helpless against hair loss. Thanks for watching guys. Till next time, this has been Leon from HairGuard.com.